What's going on everybody and welcome back to another Honda video. So today we are going to be starting the quarter on, well I already started it. I kind of jumped the gun a little bit, but I said I was going to start it in the last video. Um, so I did some sanding just with a DA, just went over with some, you know, 180 or, or 220 or whatever just to scuff everything up. I uh, got it pretty well scuffed, edges and everything. Uh, there was this little rust bubble down here and I went and sanded it and then I ground it a little bit and now you can see it's sort of getting bigger. So uh, there's two panels here. There's a panel that goes from the back side and one on the on this side and they're sort of sandwiched together and it's somehow rusting from in between the two panels. That's what it looks like to me. So what I'm going to end up doing is cutting this section out even though I don't want to. Uh, I'm going to have to probably just cut it out and then I'll put a new piece in from behind and then we'll try to fill it and shape it accordingly it's going to be a little bit of a pain but we'll have to get it done i'm going to probably jack it and take this wheel off that should make it easier for me to get to the back side of this and see what's going on but yeah we are going to have to cut this <clears throat> so i'm just going to make some cuts and we'll put a piece of metal in here in its place because once rust starts you can't really stop it unless you cut it all out so i don't really want to mess with this thing bubbling again on me so we're gonna have to get rid of it but I did fill a couple of dents up here. They were just like two little dents. Put some filler in it. Feels pretty good. Still got to hit it with 180 before we're ready for primer. But I'll probably this time prime <clears throat> all the way up the whole pillar. Maybe not. I don't know. Still trying to figure out what I want to do. But I did use uh, tape to pull back this molding here. I got to do a little more right here. But yeah, this allows me to get underneath this little windshield molding and that way I can get paint under there and sand under there and then I'll just lay the molding back down flat like this afterwards and we won't have to worry about tearing the molding out. I would like to paint it. Maybe at some point I'll tape it all off and paint it but it's definitely going to be a pain. I don't want to have to remove the windows when I paint the car so that's just one thing that I'm going to have to work around. But yeah so I'm going to go ahead and get started cutting this out and we'll see if I can show you guys a little bit of rust repair. I'm learning as I go here, so yeah, maybe I'll just start cutting. not what we're looking for but it's what we got so it's what we got to deal with sucks but uh, that's just it is what it is I'm gonna have to cut a piece of metal that fits in this little section right here and you know maybe if I cut it out I can panel bond it in in back here and if I panel bond a piece in here then I won't even have to weld it and uh, yeah then that that'll mean just fill it in with some bondo glass and then it should be good to go. I'll try to show you guys how to do a little rust repair without welding. All right, so I took the wheel off so that we can get in on the inside of this. And it's actually pretty interesting. What I'm finding is that it really didn't rust from the inside of the wheel well. It more so rusted in between these two panels only. Like I figured it was going to be all rusty back here, but only water that got in between these two panels actually rusted so or actually made it rust so it was it was coming down in between the two panels whether that was from the the leaking trunk seal or you know i guess just water getting in here from the road if you guys take a look up under here that is should i get better light here but that's what it looks like from the inside so you can see the two holes that i poked and then where i cut through down there so it just looks like seam sealer there so all that is is the two panels are meeting right there and rust got underneath and actually rusted in between the two panels. 
So unfortunately, uh, we're going to have to fix it. I want to cut out this rear panel, I think, and then replace that with something, and then I'll go ahead and replace the front panel uh, as well. Maybe I'll do the front first. But yeah, so that's uh, the plan, so we can get rid of this rust so that it does not come back. Alright guys, so I'm here under the car and I've been cutting for a while now. I did get to the back side of it and you can see I cut out my original area right here and then I realized that uh, the rust continued up this way and my main concern is the rust on this exterior panel. Uh, this I don't want to rust either but that's not going to show on the paint uh, when it bubbles through because it won't bubble through uh, but this one right here will and you can see the rust on the back side of here is already starting. Um, so. I had to take this whole section out here just so I could really get to the back of this and treat this. Um, and you can see the rust is sort of diminishing up here. So hopefully we are catching it early enough and it, I guess it would make sense this back half is what's rusting. I mean maybe water was collecting in here. We'll make sure we have some kind of drainage uh, in here I think. I'd like to put some kind of drainage in here just in case water does collect. I'd like to drain out and not sit in here. Um, but yeah. so. We're looking pretty good. I think I can access the back of this really good, so I'll be able to panel bond uh, the exterior here, so no warpage, which will be nice. And then we can weld something in uh, back here. Hopefully, we can get something welded in here to seal this back up, and then we'll seam seal it from the trunk. And uh, yeah, we should be good to go. But yeah, it's uh, interesting that it's rusting in between the panels. Uh, definitely water getting in between or something like that. So have to address that but yeah it's good we're gonna be able to treat this from the back I'm not looking forward to making this piece out of sheet metal but I'm sure I'll be able to figure it out so yeah that's uh, where we're at with this I think that I'm gonna get some actual fender sheet metal because um, the stuff I have is thicker before I try to put anything uh, in back here but I can start by treating the rust so I'm gonna go ahead and grab a wire brush and hit everything really good um, yeah, I don't know. I might be able to grind some of that out. We'll see if I can grind it out. If not, then I'll just wire brush it, hit it with some rust converter, and see if we can uh, turn it into an inert material so it stops rusting. So you'll notice I did save this piece that I cut out, and I can use this guy as a template or, uh, you know, something to trace, and then make it slightly larger for my piece that I'm going to weld into the back. So it's good to save your stuff. This is the one from the inside. But uh, yeah, it's good to save stuff. That way you know uh, what you gotta make to fill it in. But yeah, I think right now what I'm gonna do is make this piece right here. And I'm gonna make it slightly larger. I'm gonna go in the back, grind all of this down to bare metal. And once that's all bare metal, I can fit my piece in there. And I'll see if I can find a way to clamp it. But I'll panel bond that in there. And then once that dries tomorrow, then we can actually start working on fabricating the inside piece. So I kind of changed my mind a little bit with what I want to do. I don't want to panel bond that piece in tonight. What I actually am going to do is take my rust converter. I'm going to go inside, wire brush everything, and hit it with the rust converter. Uh, it's just like an aerosol can, a rust converter. You can get it in like a, you can get it in like a gel or all different ways. But this way is nice because you can hit it uh, with that, and then you can hit it with a top coat after, like a primer or something, and then seal it up really good. So they really want you to wait 24 hours. I don't normally, but I really want this to be a solid repair. So I'm gonna wait uh, the right amount of time. This just came in straight from China. I got this nice uh, suction cup mount with like a, a little cable here that I zip tied to the inside of the bumper. So I think this would be pretty sweet if I can get a microphone on my old GoPro and get it on the uh, exhaust pipe there. I think it would sound really cool from back here. So that's something that I definitely want to try. Get a few shots of that. I think that'd be pretty sweet. Um, yeah, but overall, got some good progress going on tonight. Basically cut a giant hole in the car, but I'm gonna call it for tonight after I uh, do a little bit of rust converter. I think that'll be it for the night. And uh, yeah, I'll pick up on this probably a couple nights from now. And I'll maybe try to panel bond that piece in and then after that we can fill it and we can start working on fabricating the inside while we're filling the outside at the same time so we can jump back and forth. But yeah, this is gonna take me a little while, but you know, it's worth it and I don't want this to re, you know, resurface in a couple of years or something. I'd like this to be 
at least a five to ten year repair. Uh, the thing about rust is it always comes back. I mean, I'm cutting out a good amount of it, so this hopefully should be a ten year repair or something like that. Um, but it remains to be seen what's going on in this side. Hopefully this side's not like that too, but I guess we'll just have to see. I do know, uh, I can. I was looking the other day, there is actually filler in this recorder. I can tell this body line is not as sharp as it should be. Maybe you'll be able to see it on camera, but it's kind of rounded off. Um, whereas on the other side, well, now it's all sanded. It's gonna be hard to tell. But uh, the body line is much sharper. You may or may not be able to tell anymore. Once the, When the paint was on it, it was easier to tell. But it's a much sharper line on the other side. So there's definitely filler in this side. So we're going to have to see um, how much filler and exactly what went on. I mean, we can check back here. But I think it's just surface stuff, probably just a skim coat from the damage that was in the door. So something obviously hit the whole side of this car. But, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So you guys can see out here there's like some kind of reaction going on. There's a little bit of stuff here. Kind of looks like rust, honestly. But we'll grind that off on the inside. However, it's looking pretty good. Let me get my head in here. But uh, yeah, so everything is looking pretty black in there, which is good. It means that all that rust has been uh, converted uh, to an inert, uh, something that's not going to react, actually. So it's like inert. It's no longer going to corrode. So that's exactly what we want there. Um, so I'm gonna wait a little while longer, spray another coat, and then I'm gonna let this sit for 24 hours. And then after the 24 hours, uh, I'll regrind the little section over there um, and panel bond that piece in. And then after I do that, I can prime in there. And once I prime and get all that uh, stuff covered up, I can go ahead and start fabricating our piece for the back here. So it's the following day, and, or actually two days later, and looking up under here, you can see I just threw a fresh coat of primer on there. Hopefully you can hear me, my dad's mowing the grass. But uh, yeah, so I threw a fresh coat of primer up on there, and uh, what we're going to do now is grind that section out right over here, and get ready to panel bond that piece in, and I'd like to get that piece panel bonded tonight. I think that would be a good goal. Alright guys, so we're ready to panel bond. I have this clean and the inside is now clean. I was able to make uh, a cookie wheel that actually worked by taking two uh, two broken ones that we had and uh, I made one that works, kind of. It still kind of grinds, but it definitely works. So I was able to get in there in the back. 90 degree uh, cookie wheel is definitely necessary because the air hose is in the way otherwise with this guy. But uh, yeah, so I got my panel bonder here, my 3M panel adhesive. And we're going to see how well this stuff works. I mean, I definitely could weld this piece in right here. And like, I don't know. I guess I could weld it in. And that would totally work too. But, uh, you know, it just opens up more opportunity for me to warp the panel. And this is pretty big, so I'd be working on this for a while. But uh, with Panel Bonder, I'm hoping that uh, it doesn't crack in the future. I guess if this fails... Uh, all the doors are probably going to fail too because I did all the doors. So I guess if the bodywork's going to fail, I might as well have it all go. <laughs> What's the sense in welding this when I have everything else panel bonded? So I'm going to try it. I mean, I guess we'll test the uh, integrity of this and I'll definitely be able to let you guys know how uh, well it holds up, you know, if I still have the YouTube channel in a few years because uh, I'm pretty sure this will be good for at least five years, you know. But we'll see how long it lasts because I plan to keep the car for a while. But yeah, um... We're getting there. I'm getting excited here because once I get this in, I can do the body filler on this and then prime this whole section. And then the other side should be easier. Although there is more body filler in the other side, which I'm gonna probably show you guys right here. This body line, I don't know if I showed you before, but there was filler in that door. There's also filler in this fender right here. So yeah, I think I might have mentioned that last night though. So I'll probably even cut this clip out or maybe I won't whatever whatever but yeah pretty pumped getting pumped up hopefully you guys are too um, this thing is slowly but surely coming together got to go to the junkyard again pretty soon to get a bumper also I found another oil leak which maybe I'll show you guys that but uh, that's pretty interesting but I'll show you that later um, valve covers leaking again basically so I ordered a new one this time I got a Felpro 
No, it's not OEM Honda, like everybody keeps saying, but I just couldn't rationalize the whole kit. I want to get the whole kit with everything in it, and it was 50 bucks from Honda. It's like, that's crazy. So I spent 25 and got a Felpro. Comes with everything, including the uh, the spark plug tubes, O-rings for the where you torque the actual uh, cam cap down. So, you know, with the rocker arm assembly. So I got O-rings for that if I need to, but I already changed those and they're not leaking, so I won't touch them, but yeah. Have some spare parts, never bad. So yeah, I'm gonna get to work panel bonding, but I did wanna show you guys how I actually purge the tip on this thing. Um, so obviously we got a lot to go here because this is almost used up. But uh, yeah, so I like to get like one whole squeeze at least to actually come out of this because you want it to be purged properly because it's a two-part and you want to make sure that it mixes in the tip good. So I'm just going to lay a nice spot right here and it's kind of wasteful but there's quite a bit in this tube like you're not wasting that much and you really want to make sure it's purged or else your stuff is not going to dry. So I always put out about that much and then I just hit the stopper which I can't hit with. There we go. So. Now all that stuff right there we'll just leave and then we can start using this tip. So we're good to go. Alright guys, so I got the panel bonder drying. My allergies are really getting to me right now, but yeah, it was a pain. It took me a little while. Um, the clamps, they didn't want to cooperate, but what I did was I put uh, tape on them, packaging tape, and uh, that should make sure that the panel bonder doesn't stick to it, because uh, it shouldn't stick to the tape. I guess we'll find out, but the last thing I want to do is panel bond. A bunch of clamps to my car so hopefully it doesn't stick and we'll be good with that it took me a while to line it up but I did eventually get it all lined up I got three clamps on it so we're gonna let that sit for 24 hours and then we'll see uh, just how strong it is and then we can go ahead and throw some filler in it but yeah I figured I could show you guys the oil leak while I'm at it so it is leaking from this corner of the valve cover you can see right there where the Honda bond is um, it's leaking out of that corner. This gasket I probably have used like four times. So, it, you know, it just makes sense that it's leaking. You can see down here, um, there's a little bit, I'll just put the flashlight down there, but you can see there's a little bit of oil down there. And I had people, when I went for the alignment at uh, my dad's shop, people were telling me that my axle was leaking back here, my axle seal. And you can see down there by the trans, I was pretty worried, well, you can't really see. Yeah, down there on the silver trans, you could see there's a little bit of uh, oil everywhere. And I was worried that uh, I had an axle seal leaking and then I had trans fluid uh, obviously leaking out. And, you know, I was going to run out of trans fluid or something. So I was like, let me check. And then I d ended up tracing it up. And it ends up that it's the valve cover gasket. It's coming out of there, going under the distributor. And it's actually going onto the clutch line following that down and leaking on top of the trans and going towards the front and towards the back. So it kind of comes down near the uh, passenger side axle seal and drips off the trans down there. So it really looks like a, a you know axle seal leak, but in reality, it's a valve cover gasket. So that just shows uh, when you got an oil leak or some kind of leak, you always got to go up, guys. Always travel up because you know you could look from the bottom of the car and you could say anything's leaking. You know, could have said it was the rear main or whatever. So you just got to make sure you always go up. Always check a little bit higher and uh, make sure it's not coming from above. So we're going to get a Felpro on here and I'll show you guys how to seal that correctly. And hopefully this time we can get this thing to not leak. And uh, 
Yeah. I mean, other than that, I think the motor's pretty good. There might be leaks over in the timing cover. Something I want to do is uh, loosen the timing belt a little bit. I feel like it's a little bit too tight because it kind of whines. Um, so that's something that I would like to try. Uh, this one seems like it's kind of getting worn out already, honestly. I don't know. Maybe it's because it's too tight or something. But maybe I'll get another belt coming and uh, change that. I definitely don't want to uh, snap a timing belt and bend valves. But I doubt that would happen. Um, overall, the car's running really good. But, uh, yeah, I think that this is going to cap it off for this video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. And uh, we'll definitely do a part two on this rust repair after this panel bonder dries. Um, yeah, but thanks for watching, everybody. Subscribe if you want to see more bodywork and see this car actually get painted someday, soon, in the future. Um, I don't know. I'm working hard. I'm trying my best. Uh, I want to get this car done as quick as possible. I want it to look nice and painted. And uh, yeah, I've been thinking about other ideas for uh, this thing as far as motor goes. But I think I probably want to stick with the uh, F22. You know, I, I toyed around with the idea of throwing a K in it. But... Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's a lot of money and a lot of work. Maybe in the distant future. But for right now, I think I might like to grab a Junkyard F22 V2, build it up, um, you know, forge rods and pistons. No sleeves or anything like that, but forge rods and pistons, and then have it built on a bench ready to go in, and then uh, either try to turn this thing up till it blows up, or just pull it out running and then throw that one in. But uh, yeah, I think pretty soon I'll get another map sensor and turn the boost up in this. But uh, yeah, that all remains to come. So once again, thanks for watching and peace out. I'll stop rambling. Uh, have a good night, guys.